because she wasn't involved, she doesn't have the answers that people want her to have. If not Catherine McBanwa, who set up the alleged murder for hire of Dan Markell? The noted Florida State University law professor was shot to death in his driveway on July 18th, 2014. What enemy or enemies had Mr. Markell made that set into motion such a brutal act? At the time, he was going through a messy custody dispute with his ex-wife, Wendy Adelson, over their sons. The answer? His own family. But none of the Adelsons stood trial in 2019 for Markel's death. Just Meg Banwa and the father of her children, Sigfredo Garcia. Did you have anything to do with the murder of Dan Markel? No, ma'am. Meg Banwa and Garcia were tried together, accused of accepting money from the Adelsons to carry out the hit with Garcia's friend, gang member Luis Rivera, who testified against them. Garcia was convicted of murder, but the jury could not decide if Meg Banwa was the link between Garcia and the Adelsons. As to Ms. Meg Banwa, I will declare this case mistried. Now, with Meg Banwa facing retrial, her lawyers say they hope Garcia will come clean on one thing she cannot explain. His relationship with Charles Adelson. Before Markel's death, Mac Banwa was dating Wendy Adelson's brother, Charlie Adelson. Do you ever joke about he looked into hiring a hitman, but buying you a TV as a divorce present would be cheaper? He did make that joke. For arranging the hit, prosecutors said McBanwa received a car and breast implants from Charlie Adelson, plus payments from the Adelson family dental practice. Who paid for your breast implants? I did. How did you pay for your birth implants? Well, from my cash tips. They have recordings supporting the fact that she was actually working for Charlie as a personal assistant. But Meg Banya's lawyers say she can't explain how Garcia and Charlie Adelson got together. I am 100% convinced that Charlie Adelson somehow contacted Sigfredo Garcia without letting Catherine know. Part of that deal was Charles Adelson breaking up with Catherine so that Sigfredo could get back the woman that he loved so much. But her lawyers are certain of her innocence, even though prosecutors believe otherwise. We actually allowed the prosecution to come and meet with Catherine the Friday before we began trial. And she told them, I have nothing to do with this. You can ask me anything you want. And they just weren't satisfied with her responses. They want her to say that Charlie Adelson got her to get the father of her children to commit a murder on Charlie Adelson's behalf. Unless she says that, they don't want to hear anything from her. Yeah, this is uh, an amazing story, right? You've got two people convicted already, but um, there's a lot more people. If, if you're arguing and you're the prosecution, you're arguing this is a murder for hire case. How can you not charge the people who would have hired the killers? It's bizarro world in the prosecution of this case. It's, it's unreal. Let's bring in Chanley Painter. Uh, Chanley, that was the, the head-scratcher throughout this entire case, was you, prosecution, are saying this is a murder-for-hire case. You have charged the alleged hitmen. Uh, you've, uh, you've charged the alleged middle woman, but you have not charged the people who you say have hired someone to actually commit the murder, the whole motive, the whole why of it. it it's, it's, it's absolutely bonkers that you can try to prosecute the case this way. Vinny, that is the $100,000 question in this case. You know, the prosecutors all along said the motive for this was the uh, Adelson's hate and disdain towards their ex-son-in-law, and yet they present no proof. They have no proof. They have, say they have no evidence to bring them to prosecution. So therefore, Garcia, as well as Meg Banwa, have been tried for this. Of course, there was a mistrial for Meg Banwa. So she is going to be retried. And the key here, Vinny, what's going to be new is that Garcia, who was convicted, sentenced to life for the murder of Dan Markell, will now possibly be a witness for the defense at the retrial. That, that could be absolutely... Um devastating to the prosecution. 
devastating to the prosecution. So let's take a listen now, because we had an opportunity to speak with um, McBanawa's defense team. Uh, again, prosecutors from the beginning have been trying to get McBanawa to be the one to get Adelson. You know, turn evidence on Adelson. Admit what you did, we give you a deal, and you testify against Adelson. That's why they haven't charged uh, the person they believe is in charge of this murder for hire plot. But let's take a listen to what her defense team says about that proposition. And everyone looks, will say to us, we see the comments, then why doesn't she just flip on Charlie? She would be lying. She would be committing perjury. You don't think that she would love to do that if she had the information so she could get home for her kids. There are people that sent her pictures in jail. Someone sent her an Instagram post of Charlie with his new baby. She has no affiliations with Charlie. She hasn't spoken to him in four years. There is no reason whatsoever why she would be protecting the Adelsons. The only issue that she has is if she pleads guilty, she has to say in order to not get a life sentence, in order for her to get a benefit, she has to say exactly what it is, the script that the government is going to practically want her to read. Yeah, that's, that's a problem. The other problem, Chanley, is that she testified during the first trial in her own defense, and successfully because she wasn't convicted, right? And what she testified to there was that she was not involved in all this. She's not the middle person. Um, she doesn't have that, wasn't getting paid by Charlie for this hit. So at this point, she couldn't testify for prosecutors because if I'm the prosecutor, I got to put her on the stand and she's got to testify to something completely different than what she testified to last time, that's, yeah, that's go, you can't do that as a prosecutor. That'd be basically unethical. Right, go straight to her credibility, exactly. You know, interesting, her defense attorney said in this interview that, that at one point before her first trial, they welcomed the prosecutors to talk to McBanawa because here's everything she knows. We want to be up front ask her whatever you want, prosecutors, but they still weren't satisfied with her narrative because she says she knew nothing about this, had nothing to do with this murder for hire plot. And her lawyers even go on to say, Vinny, that she wishes she did know something to point the finger at the Adelson so that she can go home or at some point get some deal to go home to her two children. Yeah, so as we look forward to this retrial, you know, listening to, to your report and what the defense is saying, um, so, and this is fascinating, right? That Charlie gets together directly with Sigfredo. Now, Sigfredo is the father of McBanawa's children, but McBanawa was a shot girl, right? Met Charlie at some club or wherever they met. I don't know where they met. It doesn't matter. But they were, they were an item. So what they're saying is, is that Sigfredo makes the deal. I kill your sister's soon-to-be ex-husband, Right? You stop dating my ex. That's, that's what they're saying. That's, that's an unbelievable barter. I can't, is it possible that Sigfredo could be testifying to that at the retrial? It is very possible. It's yet to be seen if he will incriminate himself some way. But that was the hole in the first trial, right? What is the connection, if not McBanwa, between you know Garcia and the Adelson, Charlie Adelson? It, what other connection would there be? Interesting also, the defense, in, in addition to calling Garcia as a witness, that's not guaranteed. They haven't exactly talked to him in person since he's been convicted. But according to their client, he will testify and say she had nothing to do with this and fill in that hole of how else he would know Charlie Adelson. You know, pre-trial in motions, Vinny, it was interesting. Their defense attorney said that there are there's some telephonic communications between Adelson and Garcia, but those were suppressed by the prosecution in the first trial. So they're hoping at this retrial, those will come back in and answer that question. Uh, that would be, I mean, it would floor me if Sigfredo got up on the stand and said, I made the deal. You break up with my ex and I'll kill your sister's ex. Wow. All right. Chanley, we're going to, we're going to keep digging into this as we get ready for this retrial. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. Uh, Chanley Painter, uh, thank you so much.